how to make imperative apex calls where we fetch an account record by its id hey everyone in this video we'll explore how to make imperative apex calls from a lightning web component using javascript's async and await syntax this method helps you fetch data from salesforce in a clean and easy to understand way we'll look at a simple example where we fetch an account record by its id when you click a button and then displays the account details in a component so first let's quickly define imperative apex call in lwc imperative calls are manual they're made by directly invoking an apex method from javascript usually in response to a button click or any other user action. This is different from wired calls, which automatically fetches data as the component loads or when specified parameters change. So here's the Apex method that fetches a single account record by its ID. And in our JavaScript, we can see that we import an Apex method get account details and we use the async function to prefix this function name. When you prefix a function name with async, it automatically returns a promise. It also enables the use of await inside of this function. The await keyword can only be used inside an async function and it pauses the execution within the async function until the promise that is our apex call in this case completes. It either resolves or it fails but until this execution is completed this function won't move any further. In our html template we just have a simple button that on press will call this function and it will await for or the apex execution to be finished. So that's how you make an imperative apex call with async and await, bringing clarity and simplicity to your Salesforce Lightning Web Component. This method lets you control the data fetch and it handles the loading and error states gracefully. The important part is that while a function wait, the rest of your program outside this function will keep on executing and it won't freeze for this await. Only this function with the await will freeze for the execution of the apex script. So if you found this helpful, please like and subscribe for more Salesforce development tips. Feel free to ask questions in the comments. Thanks for watching the video.